Hi everybody, this is Liz with 143 Handmade, and today we're going to be, today's mass make is, is stamped fabric. Just embellishments that you can use in a ton of different ways. Um, I've pre-done some, but the main thing is just to, to launder your, your sheet. Um, if you buy it new, then there's a lot of sizing and and starch and things like that on it that won't allow the inks to penetrate as well. So you really want to wash it. And then, of course, if you buy it like from a, a thrift store or anything like that, you definitely want to wash that too because you just don't know what's on it. So um, this is a laundered sheet. Um, it's all wrinkly from the dryer. I didn't even bother to iron it. And then I ripped it. I pre-ripped it into several different size strips that we'll be working with. So I'm going to go ahead and set these aside. And as you can see, you can do it in all kinds of different sizes. I just happen to be working with this really thin one to get started with. I've got out some stamps to, um, to play with. Oh, I forgot to grab my inks. Thankfully, they're right here in easy reach. Um, I have a whole bunch of different inks today. Let's see. I think I'm going to start with just the black ink. Um, it would be really good if you're going to... Uh, add any kind of watercolor or anything like that to it. You can also paint on fabric. I'm not doing that today, but if you're going to, you need to use a, a stays on or a mementos or, or you know, one of those, uh, the, the water resistant permanent inks. These, this is not, this is water soluble. So if I was to get this wet, the ink would run. So I will not be doing that. Let me see. I love these cute little stamps and, and you want to make sure you leave enough space in between the words that you can rip it and that you'll just have to play with and learn uh, your what you like how much how much space works for you I like to just kind of stick my finger in between there and that kind of acts as a measurement so that way I get them about the same so I know I know wash your stamp and all that stuff but I just I don't tend to I tend to just use my stamps and move on. So let's see, this one's, the first one was obviously just love. This one is all you need is love. And we'll just stamp a few of these along. It's kind of low on there. Let me put this one a little bit more centered. Eh, or not. <laughs> and let's see here, we'll grab this one. This one says Bliss. This is a 2006 Stampin' Up stamp set. Most of my stamps I received either from from out of my mother's things when she passed or I picked up at garage sales and stuff, stuff of that nature, thrift stores. So I really haven't bought a lot of new stamps. So I do have a few few packs of stamps of the, the silicone stamps, which I'll get out in a minute, that I bought from a friend of mine who sold Stampin' Up! stuff at one point. Uh, back when scrapbooking was all the rage. Well, I mean, not that it's not now, but, you know, in my world anyways, it kind of came through and did our thing and then let it go. You don't have to get them, you know, you don't have to worry about being super perfect. See, some of these, they kind of kick up, you know, you can't, the this one, it was a little bit, the S was a little weird. It happens, you know what, when you go to use these, it won't even matter. Some more of these little ones. Let's see which way which way I haven't used these before these these foam ones so we'll see how well these work oh I'm dropping the pad there we go cute little paw prints I have a ton of animals so paw prints are always good you know how cute would that look as a little you know topper on one of those little notepads, you know, the little scrappy notepads we make to put in our junk journals. Have that as like the topper. That's too cute. Too cute. Okay, I'm gonna do another one of those. That turned out really well. I wasn't sure, you know. Like I said, I haven't used foam ones before. Those are things that have out of my mother's stash that I'm I'm still trying to decide what things I will actually use and which things I won't. So let's see, let's actually go ahead and come back over here and we'll just try and space it about the same. And do a long piece. See, that could be a whole like page trim. Oh, that one last one didn't get. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just end up ripping that section off because it got weird. I tried to restamp it and it just that didn't work. 
but still as a page trim that would look really cute so let's move on Ooh, let's see let's do this one just a zigzag the black and then maybe we'll move on to a different color for the butterflies over there so I've got these excuse me so there we go got our zigzag going on that's super cute let's see if I'm if I can be super good and let's see line it up so they match and it just continues we'll see I don't know eh, not quite but still cute okay let's see what color do we want to do the butterflies let's see let's see do I have purple down here no, I don't. There's a good purple. This is close to my heart, hydrangea. These these ink pads are from from my mother's stuff, so they're very old, they, but they still work great. So that's that's the fabulous thing. And I do have some reinkers and stuff. So these are these are really good, high quality ink pads. I would say. See, I'm just checking to see if it's inked enough. It's really fine detail, so it's kind of hard to see if it's if it's inked enough. We'll, we'll see in a minute, huh? So there we go. I'm just kind of hold it there for a second, so that way it has a chance to absorb. Okay, well I think that on paper it would show up clearer. You get more of the detail, but I think that came out really nicely. So let's see, let's go ahead and do another purple one. Just kind of pressing each butterfly in to the ink pad. I think you're supposed to actually put these on one of those acrylic blocks. These foam ones, I don't know. Like with the silicone, I have some of those already set up. Okay, sorry about that, I was dealing with the stream. So let's go ahead and go back to the beginning. And let's see what we've done got let's see i'm gonna go ahead and measure it out in just that couple minutes we've got let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay so this is a 12 inch mark so it's one foot two feet three feet four feet, five feet. So we've got five feet of embellishment already done in just a matter of a few minutes. So let's see, let's go ahead and do some purple hearts. Make that up really good. It's a really thin one, thin lines. So it's pretty easy to ink up. And hold it on there for a second there we go oh yeah that's super cute okay and let's see what about just some purple dots and then we'll grab a different color because i think the dots will look good in pretty much any color yeah look at that that looks cool and that you could use in a cluster or, or anything like that as well. I'm going to go ahead and line it up. Or try to, anyways. For the second ink. Yeah, see? And that was off of... I only inked it once, and I did both of those stamps. So, you know, really use up your supplies that way. Make best use of your, of your ink by double inking. Let's see. What other colors? Let's see, I have cranberry right here. That would be cute with the hearts. Yeah, we'll do the hearts in the cranberry. Okay. And there we go. Stamped. Yeah, that looks really cute. Stamp it away. So the 
I really have not done this a lot. I've seen it done on a lot of YouTube channels, but I have not actually done it a lot. I, I tended to just do it as I needed it, but I think this will actually really help speed things up. Let's see, I think the, I think the butterflies will look cute in that color too. So I'm going to go ahead and do them. Finish out this very thin strip. I didn't mean to make this one quite this thin. I would suggest that you, you pull out your stamps that you want to use and stamp the end. Here, I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Instead of just trying to explain it, I'll show you what I learned by pre-ripping by pre, pre this. I, I realized that I did not actually have a lot of stamps that were that narrow that would work on it. So what I started doing is pulling out a stamp Actually, here, let me grab one of these bigger pieces. So, what I would do is I would just, I would have the piece laid out and grab a stamp. Let's see, the butterflies look good in the cranberry, and that's what I have out. So I'm going to use this, this butterfly stamp instead of the other one. And then we just, right here in the corner, Go ahead and stamp it, and then you take some. You can take whatever scissors you know you like, but you just take a little pair of scissors, move that ink pad out of the way, and then about the same distance of, above it, you snip, and then you rip. And it's just there's something so satisfying about ripping fabric. I don't, I can't really explain why it's so satisfying, but I love it. It's probably because when I was younger, my mom, she was a seamstress and for a minute, just on the side, not like professionally or anything, but she sewed all kinds of stuff and she, I spent hours and hours and hours cutting, cutting and cutting and cutting fabric, cutting out patterns. So, but because of the type of work she was doing, the type of, of sewing she was doing, a ripped edge would just never be okay. So I really don't sew that much anymore. She taught me how, and I've made a few quilts, but that's it. I can't really do like three-dimensional objects. That just doesn't work for me. I can sew flat things. <laughs> but anyway, so that's how you, um, that's, that's how you go from the big sheet. Obviously I don't have a whole big sheet, but that's how you go you know, from the large piece to make sure it fits the stamp that you want it to fit, as opposed to just pre-ripping a bunch of strips that may or may not fit. You know, you want to make sure that it fits and before you get going, because I did not on that first strip. Thankfully, I realized it on that first strip and came over to my stamp drawer and saw that, no, nope, that was too small. So... That's a really pretty stamp. Let's go ahead and go for the second stamp. The second impression. Yep, which leaves kind of a gray as opposed to the black, but it's still super cute. Let's see, let's go ahead and just keep moving down this strip. I don't know why I put my black ink away, because I meant to use it for this one. The sunflower, I think, will look really cute. Yeah, in the black. And I know you can use, like, markers and things to, like, color the stamp and have it come up, you know. Like, like take a marker and just color the leaves yellow and color the center orange and the... Or not leaves, the petals yellow and then color the leaves and stem green. You know, that that is a thing you can do. I don't usually take the time to do it but if you it, you totally can I've seen it done it's beautiful when you take the time to do that if you have those markers I don't have those markers so let's go ahead and see if the second impression will work on this one yep oh my goodness I'm getting so inky I thought I was gonna be I thought I was being really good but no look at that that's terrible Thankfully, it stays on your hands really good. It doesn't really get onto the white. I do plan to coffee stain some of this white sheet. This was a set of two king-size flat sheets. 
so they're huge so i'm gonna tea stain tea coffee stain one um eco dye you know i'll play with it and then the other i'm leaving white because i do work with so much coffee stain stuff that the white background of this really pops on it really nicely so that the white on the coffee stain paper really really shows up nicely this one says if nothing ever changed there would be no butterflies and by and the, the quote is listed as unknown they don't know who who said it but neither do i but it's adorable so and actually and with my purple I'm going to add a little, a little butterfly to it. See, I think that would look really cute right here. And let's see, can I get it in the little circle of the words? I'm going to try, I'm going to try. Yeah, look at that, that's super cute. It did ink up the edges. These are not great stamps. These corners get... Inky, I should have wiped that off before I stamped, but I don't think it really hurts anything. It's not quite as clear of an image, but it's still good, I think. So, let's see. What if we were to... Let's see, I have some other lighter colors. So, let me see. I have this, I have this pink. This is a um, hollyhock. Close to my heart ink i don't know what these little tiny ones were called but let's see which one which one do we want to do i think this one i'll go ahead and ink it up all my ink pads get cross-contaminated um you know it just is in my world i just don't worry about it here, I'm going to do this in a really light color. My cat's about to jump on the desk. I'm going to try and stop her. Sorry about that. I'm going to edit that out, I hope. I hope I edited that well. My cat did, in fact, jump up on the desk. So that actually came out quite a bit darker because of the black that was left on it. So I'm going to go ahead and do it again. That looks cute, but I think it might be a little bit dark for what I was trying to do. Nope. Do it right side up to myself. Okay, well, I guess it's just that ink pad has gotten that dark because I've gotten that much black on it. So we're going to go ahead and try this and see now what I'm doing is inking that the saying one that says if nothing ever changed, there would be no butterflies. I'm just going to ink this in the black really, really good. And I'm going to stamp it right over the top of those butterflies. We'll see how that works. But yeah, I like it. Might be a little busy for some. You know, but, you know, try layering your stamps with different color inks and stuff. My cat's trying to steal everything. So, but yeah, try layering up your stamps, you know. This is, this is an upcycled sheet. This was from, um, the thrift store. And I got it for two bucks for both of them. So, you know, we're not talking about a huge investment here. And if you're worried about waste, you can always compost with cottons. Cotton fabric will compost. So compost or worms or any kind of anything. Hang on just a second. Okay, I'm back. My kitty. She is just being very, very pushy today. Let's see, I have some of these. These are some silicone stamps that I've got pre-mounted onto the acrylic blocks. And let's see, yeah, let's go ahead and go with the black again. That will look good for this frame. I'm trying to stay out here in the light underneath the camera. These are just kind of nameplate stamps. And so by having them pre stamped on here. I can go ahead and I'll go ahead and, and I will do this with paper too, where I will just go and, and pre stamp stuff. But that'll be another good mess make. I think we'll do that next week. Well, no, I'll do something different. I think I'm going to do notebooks next week. The little, yeah, that's what I'm going to do is the little, the little notebooks that we put in our junk journals. 
the little books. We put in our bigger books. <laughs> so, yeah, I really like that stamp. And your stringies, you know, you can you can get fussy about them, or you can just worry about them as you go, or just wait till the end. I tend to keep my strings under fairly good control because of my cats, because if not, they will just come up and steal everything. <laughs> so, let's see. Yeah, we already went through all of the stamps that I have out. Of, the, of this size, anyways. So we've got two strips that are pre-done, and I will go ahead and I will rip these apart and store them um, like this, you know, where they're all, as I was saying, I will store them like this, and uh, they will, or not like this, not in the strips. If you do them, like if you use one word a lot, I would highly recommend going down and just typing, ty or typing, stamping that one word and down the entire strip and then just rolling the strip up, you know, something like this. And then like putting it into like a shoe box or something with just a slit cut in it so that we can just pull it out like a dispenser, you know, kind of like a tape dispenser. And that way you just pull out the one word you need, rip it off done or the whole strip you need whatever so but I don't I don't use any one word enough and I'm just you know just getting into the hang of this where I'm, I'm mass producing things I was just making it journal for journal one at a time and so but now I'm trying to transition to mass production because my journals are actually starting to sell really nicely which is awesome thank you thank you and so I need to pick up the production pace a little bit. So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and bring out this wider strip so we can do some of these bigger ones. I'm gonna go ahead and switch some of this. Up. There we go. So that way it's more in the light. Okay. And yes, it is washed, but my cats do get on my desk, so I do have to fight the cat hair. Thankfully that there's enough cat lovers out there that until I get my studio built, once I have an art studio, cats will not be in there. But for now, my art studio is um, what used to be our dining room. I, I totally took it over. And so our living room now is our dining room and our living room, but totally worth it. Totally worth it. So there we go. We inked it up. And there we go. Stamp it. This one says, it's kind of hard to read, but it says from the art studio of, and then there's the spice where you can sign your name. And I've used it a handful of times on paper, but I wasn't sure if it would show up real well on the fabric, but it does seem to. It does seem to show up quite nicely. Let's see. It's not inking very well. I really do need to get a new black ink. There we go. Yeah, that looks really nice. I like that. So, some 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 of my journals will be having this um, stamped in the back. Yes, I really like this stamp a lot. So we're gonna do a couple more of these. Actually, here, I'll just do one more since I already inked it, and then we'll move on to another bigger stamp. Big background stamp. This is my favorite background stamp. I love this stamp. Um, it's, let's see, what's the brand? The brand is Stamp Abilities, and the title is Swirls and Curls. Um, copyright 2004, so I don't know that this one is available anymore. Okay, so you can see that, that I didn't really press this one down, and so I did lose a little bit of this in through the center, but it just looks faded. It's still there, but it is a little more gray than the others. So, I should have pressed it before I lifted it. But. There we go. Okay, we're inked up. And this one... 
going to just fit. See, so that would that would work really really nicely as a layer on a cluster. I think I think that would be really cool. And so I'm actually just going to do this one like right up against it because I will probably tear this into down into smaller sections for clusters. So the fact that the center it's lighter, it, this that won't even matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the black away. My hat is drying out. It needs to flip over and hang upside down for a minute. That is one cool thing about the close to my heart ink pads over over the the Tim Holtz ones is that they do store with the ink pad upside down. So I am gonna go ahead and this is just a, a cleaner, you know, it's just like felt. And they don't like spray it down or anything, but it does wipe off the bulk of the black. That way when I transition to my other colors, it doesn't contaminate them as much. I did not, because I did not use the cleaners, it will, um, there will still be some black ink on there, but I'm not that concerned about it. Let's see, this one is the, the Close to My Heart Amethyst. So, but again, these are really old, so I don't even know if they have these colors anymore. But I like to throw out the information of what I'm using. But really, just use whatever you have. That's one of the awesome things about this particular project is that if you've got a sheet, you've got what you need. You know, you've got sheets, stamps, and ink. It doesn't matter what the stamps are. It doesn't matter what ink it is. You know, it will work. So that one's a really light purple. I really like this one too. Some smoky plum. Smoky plum. It's it's kind of just like a gray purple. It's purple, but it's gray. But it's purple. <laughs> it's just one of those kind of in betweens. You can't your eye can't really decide if it's purple or if it's gray. But I really like it. So see. It is kind of hard to see, but I do I do really enjoy using this stamp. This stamp is one of my favorites. Let's go ahead and do some dark brown ones. This one is chocolate because you know can't have too much chocolate, right? And you can also ink the edges of this. I'll show that in a second. So there we go. There's the brown one. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I just I had to deal with some stringies and then the puppies and, you know, but so as I was saying, you can um, ink the edges of these. You can do it in a couple of different ways. Let me grab a piece of scrap paper to put under here so I don't get my my blue mat inky. I don't know why I would care about getting my blue mat inky, but you know. I just do. So here we go. We just ink up the, the, the paddle brush. And I like to kind of just move from the middle to out on this because it doesn't it doesn't hold up like paper. You know, with paper I'll usually swirl in. But there's just another way to get the ink onto your onto your cloth. And see look now it now it kinda looks coffee stained. You know, I mean, obviously not quite the same tone because it's, I use chocolate, not, you know, coffee, but chocolate colored, covered ink or colored ink covered, <laughs> chocolate covered ink. Hmm. That's not appetizing. So, but now and on top of this brown, we can take, let's see what would look good on top of the brown. I actually think that the sunflower would look cute on top of that brown with the black. See? And so that's just another way to do this or another another take on it. So let's go ahead and rip apart some of these first ones that we did. And you you can, you know, it depends on the look you want, how you how you go about this, because you can just do the smallest of snip so and then tear. And you get that beautiful frayed edge. Let's tear out 
all those little strings. There we go. And see why I said the smallest of snip is because you can see how it's, it's, you can definitely see a very big difference here. That's where I snipped it with the scissors when I was cutting it originally. And that, but over here, you can't even see it because I did a small snip instead of the large snip. Or you can cut them apart so you have nice clean edges. I really, really like the, the frayed edge. So what I will do is I'll just go through while I have the scissors in my hand and snip where I want to rip it. And again, I'm just trying to take the smallest of snips so that way it's just enough to get it started. You may be able to just rip it without snipping. I don't have very strong hands. I have, um, I don't know exactly what it is, but I get pains in my fingers. It's probably arthritis, but you know. Um, so, I prefer to just go ahead and give myself that little starter. And they, they do get all bunchy and weird. But you just pull the strings free. And look at that. Love it. Love it. So, but yeah, don't worry about it getting bunchy. It's just the nature of the beast. It does that. And I'll be able to tear better once my finger fully heals up, too. <laughs> um, but my son's cat got me. That's what this one is. You know, they're usually quite gentle. They were raised in this house. They were born in this house. This, The kittens that we have now. But she just... I was grooming her and just hit a spot. And it just... It hurt her, so... She just, she bit my finger. So, this one's almost healed up, but actually I'm not wearing a bandaid on it when I'm not on camera at this point because it's that close, but, you know, you guys are going to be looking at close-ups of my finger, so I figured the band-aid was much more, much more appropriate. So, but this finger... You know, I just, I don't, I can't really put pressure on it because she bit it. So I have a, I have bruising on this side as well as the, the cut on that side. So, but I mean, it's all good. It's, it's not infected or anything. It's, it's, you know, we keep them clean, keep their mouths as clean as we can. They're, they're strictly inside. So the, um, the kittens are anyways, I have older cats that go outside, but the kittens who are almost two we've decided to transition from having indoor outdoor cats that, that do both that you know are inside part of the time outside part of the time we're in the weird transition of going from that to just our inside cats are going to be inside cats and then the outside cats will be outside cats because we live in the country and we need outside cats to deal with the mice but it's just really hard emotionally you get super bonded with your pet, you know, a cat, and then you let them outside and you can't, don't see them for days at a time. So we're going to have the barn cats that we don't worry about as much. You know, still get them all their shots and everything, but get them fixed so we don't end up with a ridiculous number of cats out here. But, you know, not be so, they just, I won't worry about them as much because they live outside all the time. So they just have to be stronger. These won't be the cats that I you know, groom and sleep in my bed and all of that. Okay, enough rambling about my cat, sorry. But here we go. Yeah, let me just rip these apart. You know, and if I can rip these with all the hand troubles I have, especially at the moment with all my band-aids, you know, ripping fabric is something that you can do for the most part. Most most people will be able to rip fabric. But like I said, you don't have to though. You can totally, totally just cut it. And they have all those fancy, fancy edge scissors now. I don't. All I have is pinking shears. I don't have any of the the cutesy ones. But you could totally use those. That would look cute as the edging. So you know, there's no. 
there's no limit to to what if you can if you can think about it and and or if you can think of it not about it but if you can think of it and and it'll cut fabric that's it's an option <laughs> try it see if you like it you know this is what i like so and you do end up with a ton of extra strings i have i keep a bucket under my desk for um composting for whatever's compost compostable so the the scrap papers that i don't keep believe me i keep a lot of scrap paper too but the small stuff that it's just it's just too small or it's it's too you know i, I do use wrinkled stuff but if if you know it's too messed up in some way i will go ahead and it goes out to the the either the compost the regular compost or i do have um worms a worm bin out there but as I said, I live way out in the country. I have 40 acres. We are developing the farm. So not everybody would have those options. But, and I fully respect that. That's just what I do. So all of those strings will just go in down into that bucket and become something else. So... Okay, I think you guys get the idea. I'm going to um, go ahead and, and keep working. And, but I'm going to pause the video and then uh, I'll do a little wrap up here in a minute. Okay, hi y'all. I'm back. So I just wanted to show that, you know, I just, I did the ripping on a bunch of these. And as you can see, they, they, they come out really nice. And they don't sit super flat, but once you glue them down, they, they will sit flatter. And you can always mount them on paper and whatnot. But I wanted to show that, that like on this... On, with all my the the background stamp I just stamped them like really super close together and what I will do with some of those is just right in the middle you know so that way I just I have these background pieces that aren't necessarily the full size of the background stamp and then see what I'll do is I'll come here which is in between the two and so that one stamp gave me these two separate sections because that's, you know, you can see that's the size of it. So, you know, that was the one stamp and you can do that. Um, you can also go through and like do, do it all the way down and then rip the, the smaller strips. Here, I'll go ahead and show you what I mean. What I mean is, is so I'm going to cut this here just so that way it's just on the, what is stamped portion a little easier to keep it under the camera that way but is turn it this way and take a piece and the opposite direction see so now I have this whole piece that has this multicolored background on it this one did go a little bunchy but I think you guys get the idea so thanks for hanging out with me today. Greatly appreciate it. See you. I will have, I do have another video coming out this Friday. It is the second in an open collab. It's, I'm creating pages for the cover that I created last Friday. Um, so there's that. And I have a couple of videos that will be coming out this week sometime this, uh, that are, in conjunction with Betty for the design team but from Betty's custom designs and so you'll be hearing a lot more about that so check back often hit that bell for notifications to let you know since I don't have a set schedule yet so click that bell so that way you know for sure when when things come out you can catch them thanks for watching